Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video I'm going to go over how to display bits on the Arduino. When you have an integer or a byte, sometimes it's nice to see the bits, how it's built, um, rather than just the byte itself. There's nothing natively in the Arduino programming that I've found that allows you to do it. So I've just built up this little script that I use. And it's also going to come in handy when we get to the, the real-time clock chip, the external one. I'm not going to go too much into binary, but uh, you do need to know it in order to follow this. And a binary, a hexadecimal FF converted to binary is all ones. And a hexadecimal 88 is 100100 in bytes, so it's built up of ones and zeros. What you can do in the Arduino is you can shift the bits to the right or to the left. And all you do is use this symbol right here. So if you had a variable, let's say value, and it was equal to 88, and then you put value greater than greater than equal to 1, it would shift all the bits over to the right. And you can see if you do it a second time, it shifts it more over. And then if we can, whatever value we put out here, we'll shift at that number of bits. So we're going to shift 2 this time, and you can see the 001 is now 00001, and the 1 over here is shifted off the screen. I have another example down here of, the, of, of a hexadecimal 66, which is 0110. I've separated them by the space just to make the hex a little easier to see and to follow. And then the next 6 is 0110. Then when we shift it to the right, it adds a zero on the left and shifts everything over. Then we shift it one more time and we lose the one. And then we shift it two, just like we did above. Because when you shift it back to the left, the bits that we shifted off of it are gone. So they're replaced back by zero. So you do list, this is a destructive process. Um, as you shift the, the ones off of the value, they do vanish. So hopefully that makes sense. And I like the fact that the arrows point the way that the numbers are shifting, or the ones are shifting off of the value. The other interesting thing is when you shift off to the right, you divide the number by half. Every time you shift these over, the value goes down by exactly half. And every time you shift them to the left, it multiplies times two. So that's kind of an interesting thing that happens as you work with this. The other thing we're going to have to learn is the AND symbol. You'll have to be familiar with this. It takes two values, and if, they're, if they contain a 1 at the same position in their bits, it will AND that together, and it will, it, will move a one, it will move a 1 into the values. In this case, since the 1 is lined up with a 0, you'll get a zero, and wherever there are zeros, you'll get a zero. So in this case, this one worked out to exactly zero. But if we were to shift this over by using this command over here, and then and it again, we would get the resultant would be a four. We're going to get into an example now, and hopefully it will make more sense. This is a very simple example. I have my mask set at 8, 0, which is 1, 3 zeros, and then 4 zeros. And we're going to compare it to this value, this 6, 6, which is this value here, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. The decimal value of hex 8, 0 is 128. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the serial port just to show data on the serial monitor. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to print the mask. 
we're going to ignore the value to begin with and it'll just print 80 but it's going to print it in the decimal value 128 and then we're going to shift it over to the right one time and then we're going to delay two seconds and we're going to do it again and again and you'll see that the value will start at 128 it will be cut in half every time we run through the loop you can see it starts at 128 64 go to 32 16 8 and so forth until it gets down to zero and then it will stop and that's just uh, evidence that this one is slowly moving to the right in this example we're printing the value of it but we want to print it off as bits so we want to print ones and zeros and so we're going to use this mask then to display this 66 as 0110 So we're going to comment this out and we're going to turn this into a for loop Move it out of the way. And we're going to use the mask. And as long as the mask is greater than zero, because this is going to start at 128 and move its way down to zero every time it executes this command right here, then we're going to need to do something in here then to print either a one or a zero. And this is where that and or that and symbol comes in. So if the mask, and if we and the mask with the value, so mask and the value, when we and these two together, the first time we do it, it'll be one underneath the zero and the rest will be zero. So we're gonna get a zero. So this will be false. So if it's false, we'll do an else. And if it is false, we wanna print a zero. But we want a serial print. But if it's true, the second time it goes after it's moved it over to here and the one is underneath this one, since it will equate to a value, it will be true. And then in that case, we want a serial print a one. So now in the serial monitor, we should get this value. Now we're going to destroy mask as we run this because we're going to turn it to zero so the next time it goes through it's always going to be zero. So this will only print once but we should get this right here printed out one time. And now what we do is we have that value. And this is nice for testing especially when we go and we gather the runtime clock data because it comes in in a format that will be nice to be able to see it in bit value so that we can manipulate it the way we want. Instead of writing this over and over or running it through the loop over and over there may be different instances where we want to call this or end up making a library at a later date. So what we'll do is we're going to uh, make it its own function. So we'll place it outside the, the main loop. And then we'll comment this one out. And I've always called this just print binary. And we're going to send it the value or a value. And then we have to put the whole thing in curly braces. And we're going to have to assign the value of mask though within this. We'll set this equal to... You can set this to 128. That's the value. But I find it's easier to keep it in hex. That way I can split this up into a way that makes sense. And we'll get into another example when we're done to show you that. And then up here we'll just call it. And we'll put in the value. But we need to break it up with a serial print line. Because if you notice down here, we're just printing. It doesn't ever put a new line on it. That'll just make it look a little bit cleaner. And what it's going to do is it's just going to print that value over and over and over. And you can see now if we had multiple things, we could just call that when we need. 
And some people leave this as a byte because most of the time you're only going to be looking at eight bits at a time. But I like to keep it an int. And to be honest with you, this should be, probably be classified as an int also. And then that way, if we want, we can come up here and we can make this 766, which would be 0111. 0, 1, 1. And then down here, since we know we're going with a bigger number, we just add that because we have three values here, so we need three values down here. Now when we run this, it should just automatically adjust to what we need. And you can see now we have the 0, 1, 1, 1, and then the 0, 1, 1, and it added those four bits. I'm gonna set the value back to 66. I'm going to leave this checking for more, more data so we can move the value back and forth. Because in this, we can not only can we move the bits down here, but we can also move them up here. And since we're moving them to the right, it will be divided by 2 every time we step through this. We're going to go ahead and print it in here. Well, no, let's add a line and then we'll print it in there. I'm going to run this. We're starting with the value hex 66, so I'd have to do the math and I can't do it in my head to get the real value, but what you should see is whatever the first value is, the next value should be cut in half. 25, 12, it's integer, so it's going to round it. So that pretty much works like we would expect. Now let's do the opposite. So now it should be multiplied by 2. And that's why I left this counting some more digits, so it'll have more space to move the ones across we can see more data. You can see 204, it should be 408. If I had left this only 8, it would have run out of digits. The main point of this video was to show you how to display or how to print bit values on the Arduino in the serial port, or you could send that to the next display. You could do about anything with that. In the next video, I'm going to compare binary and BCD because the runtime clock chip that I'm going to be using is going to be sending data to the Arduino in BCD format. And that's where these ones and zeros are going to really come in handy and where we'll be able to want to look at the bit values instead of just it as, a, as a byte. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.